we need all these parts of ourselves to get things done. You're talking about other dimensions and, so, you know, I believe in God also, and I believe in soul evolution. I think there's so many names that we call this force that has our back, really has our back. And when we lean into trusting that, then, then we can ascend, we can evolve, we can transform all of this unhealed trauma, all the stuff that's stuck. It's like, it's just like, for me, it's just about being present. That's what a sovereign does. A sovereign rests back on her throne. Welcome back to the Balance Goldie Podcast for ambitious women in the business and a few brave men. I'm your host, Nikita Rinthigden, the number one balance and relationship advisor in the world, serving power couples striving to live fully. I am so grateful for you guys to be with us again today for so many reasons. First of all, you know how we have those spaces in our lives where we're just like full of excuses, nothing feels like it's in alignment, everything feels like it's awry, we can't figure out why we don't have our energy flowing? Well, I mean, you could check whether or not you are completely whole. That might be a good place to start, which is why I invited this beautiful, brilliant beauty to this podcast today, Miss Cherie Burton, a mother of six Let's spell that out. S I X. So if you were like, ah, oh, I can't imagine. Well, hunty, she can tell you some stories because there's some gaps in them ages of them babies, too. An author, international speaker, and host of an amazing sought after podcast, Women Seeking Wholeness. Sheree, welcome to the Balanced Holy Podcast. How are you today? Thanks, Nikita. I'm good now. <laughs> I'm good now. I'm so glad you're here. You're in the middle of some amazing things. You guys just moved. You're still unpacking boxes and you still made time to show up and share your truth with our listeners. I honor and appreciate you. Please tell everyone just a little bit about what you're doing in the world these days. Ah, uh, wow. Well, besides raising the babies, <laughs> I, I, I guess you could say I'm also raising myself. I mean, I'm 52 years old and I'm just finding out what it means to be me. Yeah. And that's been huge. But as far as my work in the world, because, you know, you're only as good as what you're doing inside and what's going on in here and how you're nurturing and loving you and mothering yourself. Um, but I have a huge, huge passion for waking women up to the truth of who they are. And so, of course, the universe would have me go through all these series of learnings, right? Yes. But, uh, I know it gets used a lot, this phrase, empowering women. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've also moved that over into empowering men. And mm -hmm. I know you work with couples as well. As each of us has a masculine and a feminine dynamic inside of us. Yeah. And so marrying that is what's fueling my fire right now. Marrying the masculine and feminine inside yourself. Well, a couple of my favorite words, married, fire, <laughs> <laughs> and inside myself. But I have a little bit of a dirty mind, so we won't go there. <laughs> I got that. I got that. I'm right there with you. <laughs> She's like, I know. I have six kids. I mean, really. Um, <laughs> When, when you show up to work every day and you're helping now, you know, men and women um, and really serving them in their truth, are you finding that some of the challenges are different for how the women are presenting as saying like, I'm, you know, I'm seeking my awakening, I'm confused or challenged. Are men kind of coming from that same angle? Or are you seeing them, you know, ask a different question, but ultimately seeking the same assistance from you? Yeah, good question. It's, it's pretty much all the same. We're all just trying to heal our own trauma. We're all just trying to get, get to what, why do I do this thing I do? Yeah. Because relationships are a mirror to how we actually feel about ourselves. So any relationship is like that, but especially like a couple's partnership. Um, I, I almost divorced. I'll be straight with you, Nikita. Yeah. I almost, I, my husband and I, you know, you just saw how cute he is. He was in. Yes, he is. Sexy, sexy. <laughs> <laughs> well, things weren't always so sexy. Um, you know, between me running an international business, traveling, this is pre COVID, um, all the children, you know, all the many responsibilities, we kind of lost our fire. We kind of lost the way we communicate. We'd lost our friendship. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, we were basically roommates and it got to the stage where I filed for divorce and we yeah. separated for 10 months. Yeah. We actually reconciled in, right as COVID, well, kind of like April of 2020. So right when COVID was in full bloom. And so COVID was a year for us to just like really work on our, we decided that it came down to like, it's, it's not necessarily about the dynamic between each other because we realized we really do love each other. Yeah. It was, or our kids, it wasn't anything out here. Mm -hmm. It was how does Cherie love and nurture and, 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 and be her own lover of her own soul. How does Jeff be his own sovereign masculine, you know, so we had to give each other space to be who we are. And then when we came together and our kids, the big, you know, my kids, as you, as you noted, there's some gaps in ages. So my kids range in age right now from seven, almost seven to 27. Mm, 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 mm. So, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a long story. Same husband, not second marriages, not blended families, but we, we did, we did get these two bonus children later in life and it's stressful as it is to be, you know, but we, I, let's see, Eli was born when I was 44 and uh, almost 44. Emma came when I was 45. Um, and they were adopted, but still yeah, two separate private adoptions, whole, st whole, whole miraculous story, but you can get into this like zone where you're so caretaking everything out here. Women are very relational. Yeah. We see everything out. A man will be like, Hey, I'm angry. I'm going to go work it out. I'm going to go eat something. I need sex. Women will outsource their needs and desires all day long to meet the needs of what's going on around them and, and, and caretake and nurture. So, so we true. come last on the list. So, so it becomes this whole like, uh, it became for us, hey, you know, sink or swim. Do we want to save this family? Do, and it came to, do I want to save myself? Yeah. Do I, re, do, I, do I care enough about me? Because how I'm showing up to him is how I, I'm showing up to myself. Listen, I'm trying not to shake the maracas in the background and mess up the audio <laughs> feed. Because <laughs> my husband edits this podcast and he'll be like, didn't I tell you to stop shaking maracas every time you want to celebrate something amazing? Uh, but you're a thousand percent correct. Um, I dropped a book um, literally April 2020, right in the middle of COVID when everyone thought I was crazy. Uh, it's a survivor memoir, not a how-to or anything. It's called Selfish. And I use that word very spiritually and very purposefully because we don't, we don't claim selfishness. We bought into the old patriarchal term that was oh, yeah. created in the 1600s that was there to specifically hold women in a place. If you were not willing to do whatever your husband told you, whenever he suggested it, opposite of you pushing a baby out of your vagina or being on your menses, then yeah. the religious you know, patriarchy of the time said you were selfish and we still live by that word. Like, Oh, you're, you're being yeah. selfish. If you're not willing to give your all to your man, uh, excuse you. How about, I don't need him. He shouldn't need me, but we should want to be together. And I can't want to right. be with anyone if I'm not full. And if I'm not wanting to be here myself, like I'm claiming being certified in selfish behavior for the intention of filling all the way up. So you can pour out to, we have two kids and two grandbabies. You have six kids, Lord Jesus. But, you know, you have. <laughs> and two grandbabies. <laughs> and, and two grandbabies. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> bonus on bonus. You need energy to do that. And you can't get there no. if you're constantly serving all the other people around you. That I, I literally say, it's like you're breastfeeding everyone else and you're not being oh, nurtured. Yeah. 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 And I have to tell you, Nikita, because part of my, my career has focused on, um, I'm, I'm kind of a holistic psychologist. So I, I have been in stages across the world speaking about how our emotions yeah. that we suppress and bury, including the collective emotions that women, and you're talking about the, the religious patriarchy and the, you know, it's all, it's everywhere. It's, it's, it's women coming, trying to find their voice, swallowing things down, so I got to the point when you're talking about, I was literally trying to breastfeed humanity. I, yes. I was not giving the mother's milk to myself, if you will, right? Like mm -hmm. I actually have had like three mammograms and an MRI thinking I had breast cancer, all these things because 
and the thyroid, you know, the, the suppression of the voice and the, you know, my grandmother had her thyroid removed. My sister, my mom has thyroid issues like this generational suppression. Yes. Um, and enslavement to the machine, the matrix. So when you unplug from that and you're like, Hey, I am my own. Mm-hmm. My favorite word is sovereignty. Mm. Well, it's my second favorite word. My first favorite word is beloved. Um, but sovereignty, you know, is, is about when we're talking about, especially a marriage, it's two sovereigns that make a powerful marriage, not this enmeshed, like I need you to complete me kind of thing. Right. Yeah. The bonus two sovereigns coming together and saying, Hey, I am my own in my own domain. I am my own in my own domain over here. And we can come together and create more than we could in our own sovereign together. But I don't need you. Amen. I don't need the patriarchy, right? Mm, yes. Yes. Listen, <laughs> you guys can't see us, but we are looking at each other like, child, I'm trying to sit uh-huh. in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, it's interesting that you you have those those words, like the consult that we call that we have titled for our power couples that are potential power couples coming in is literally called building better together. And that's the consult call mm-hmm. versus calling a discovery call. I love that you have your favorite words are beautiful and spiritual. My first favorite word is no. And my second mm-hmm. is boundaries. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think my children would like your house better. <laughs> You're like sovereign and beloved. And I'm like, no, boundaries. <laughs> well, okay. No, I listen, that is so incredibly empowering. Uh, I, yeah, I couldn't <laughs> say no for, oh, you need me to do this for the school. Okay. Okay, all these things for my church. Okay. Uh Oh, for my kids. Oh, for this, that, the other. Like, even in my business, I was, you know, that movie with Jim Carrey, Yes Man, or whatever it's called. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I was that, like, on steroids for a while. And I just, you know, it's interesting when you talk about boundaries, because a sovereign sits on a throne. Come on. And she is in a courtyard and a queendom, right? And it's like, she decides who comes into that courtyard. She decides who gets to, who is worthy of her time. And I'm not meaning that. And like, I love that you have a a good uh, association with the word selfish. It's not selfish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, you know what? I'm going to drain my energy. What kind of queen am I going to be? Yeah. If I am plugging into care, putting out the fires, Let's let this committee do this over here. And that's what they do. Right. I am here to love. Yeah. That's why beloved is my favorite word is I am here to love. That's the one thing I can do really well when I feel good. Yeah. And I don't care what business association I'm making, what audience I'm speaking to, whatever, my kids, the school, church, whatever. Mm-hmm. If I, if I'm not feeling it and I'm not full of energy, nobody's getting the good Cherie. They're getting the tired, burned out, depleted Cherie. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she's not, she is not like, yeah, don't, don't cross her. She's not, <laughs> she's like, not, she is not the she person not I want to describe. Popularity. <laughs> Exactly. You're like, I don't even want to describe you to her. Just don't come close. Okay. Don't come close to that version of me. No, I I hear you completely, you know, beyond what you teach the world. You know, I have a a space in my heart uh, for living fully, which I describe as really fully living the life that you teach, preach and sell to other people. And that's what you're describing. Like, I can't be as powerful as I know I am when I'm living in my whole self. And, and that includes the evolu- evolution of, of knowing that you're still awakening at like another dimension. Like I believe in dimensions and realms of reality. Mm-hmm. And as you're going from one level to another, it's, you know, you do master each level before you move forward, but you're not a master of it all because we're not omniscient beings as much as we, are, we might want to think that we are. Mm-hmm. 
that's a place for something else. I happen to believe in God. Some people believe in spirit or source or whatever other term that they call it. And maybe we're all calling it the same thing. Um, but knowing that there's something bigger than me that is omniscient, that's pulling me forward. So I, I'm on a constant journey of, of evolution to be more full, to live to my truest self, to not have to become Kia. That's that's my version of your like, girl, don't come close to that one. When you bring out <laughs> Kia, Kia is the, the child, right? Like Kia is the young person who wasn't healed and had broken cracks in her foundation and was still flying through life as if there was nothing wrong with one engine burned out, right? Like that was her. Right. You don't want that person standing up for you. You don't want that person yeah. trying to guide or facilitate anything for you. So I hear you completely. Yes. And also, and I call my version, if you're Kia, is Kali, like the goddess that rips the heads off the men and holds the Woo! scalps and like fire everywhere, you know, the ancient Hindu goddess. Mm -hmm. um, that's that, that the, my wild, fierce feminine, and, which is a good thing, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that needs to come out. Oh yeah, you're a warrior yeah. for a reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> so so, but you know, I guess you know, with the whole wholeness piece of it, which is you know, my podcast, Women Seeking Wholeness, I realize like we don't we need all these parts of ourselves to get things done. You're talking about other dimensions and. So, you know, I believe in God also, and I believe in soul evolution. I think there's so many names that we call this force mm -hmm. that has our back. Yes. Really yes. has our back. And when we lean into trusting that, then, then we can ascend, we can evolve, we can transform all of this unhealed trauma, all the stuff that's stuck. It's like, it's just like, for me, it's just about being present. That's what a sovereign does. A sovereign rests back on her throne. In any moment, whether she's at the grocery store, the kid's throwing a tantrum, I don't know, there's an earthquake. <laughs> she sits in her, she's like, okay, what, this is what I've got right now. This is my power right now. Yeah. And, and that's all you've got. Now, Eckhart Tolle teaches a lot about this. Many spiritual teachers teach about this. You know, when you belong to yourself, Brene Brown, Oprah, everybody, when you belong to you, it does not matter what's going on out here. Mm -hmm. You, you know who you are and you'll get the dream stealers and the naysayers. And, and again, your husband's part of this, right? He's trying to work out his own stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and ultimately you can only love others at the level you are able to receive it for yourself. That is the, that is the grand, for me, that's been the grand key. Married 26 years this month, um, 52 years old, several ch children, thousands of people in my business that I am a leader over having to learn that how I show up to me yeah. is what the world's going to get. And that is a sacred decision that I make every day. How am I going to show up for me? Am I going to be radically compassionate with myself? Or am I going to go into self-flagellation and beat up and, mm -hmm. and self-annihilation, really? Mm -hmm. And so it's a choice. It's a choice. And I, and I think it's cool, women like you who create these tribes and these safe spaces um, for people to rest back into, because that is God. Yeah. That is what people, you know, when I say the universe has your back, God has your back, angels, whatever, spirit guides, there's so many names for this, mm -hmm. right? Um, really, it's, it's, it's. There's that. That's a huge mystery that we don't know. But then you look at what's in front of you, people, people showing up that way as God in motion. Yes. To give you exactly what you need in those moments when you're noticing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the feminine energy, the feminine energy. She notices the masculine energy. He moves to action. She rests back. And this is in men and women, by the way. She rests back. She notices, what am I feeling? Yeah. And, and who can I include and what can I notice and how can I source love here? And the masculine is like, now what do I do with this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you do nothing. And that's, I think that's what I'm noticing for myself. I'm a producer. I'm an achiever. I love to travel. I love to be around people. Um, 
for those of you in astrology, I have a Gemini moon. It's a real problem. I also also have a Capricorn sun. And so I'm business and structure. And so it's very, it's just like masculine and achievement stuff. But this other sunny side of me wants to be like, oh, and that's why I started a podcast. I love to talk, but the, but, but yeah, so the bottom line rests into like, how am I going to show up? And be selfish, like you're saying, mm-hmm. today for me, yeah. first. And and you don't just say that once a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a moment yes. by moment habit. New neural patterns you have to lay down to to rest into that beautiful self compassion and power. Really, am I going to use my voice? Am mm-hmm. I going to advocate for myself? Yeah, because we do it for other people. Mm-hmm. We do. We teach others how to do that. Yeah. And we'll stand, we'll stand for other people, you know, as mama bears. And we ha- just both happen to be mama bears. I know a lot of people listening to this show are mama and papa bears. And, and some don't have natural born children from their wombs, but they've adopted, you know, their aunt, their nieces, their nephews, sure. their their neighbor's kid or the whole nine, the nurturing spirit of you. You will stand in front of a truck that's coming full steam ahead to save your babies. But you won't yep. necessarily sit down uh, for yourself. Like just sit right. still and breathe and stop letting all the distractions and the advocacy, even the good things that we do, be distractions that are keeping you from diving deeper into who you are supposed to become. Um, I'm a hashtag Michelle Obama all day. So the yes. becoming that's necessary, that. right? That documentary, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so I, I love what you're doing and I have to ask you for all the work that you're doing and all the ways that you're, I think the word that you used earlier was uh, awakening to create this next level of your alignment with your greatest self or maybe just greater self since there's constant right. levels to your journey. How are you giving yourself permission to pause? Yeah, I love it. Well, I have this mantra, stop, breathe, receive. So when I'm feeling all the feels and I'm feeling emotion come up and I'm feeling, you know, stress, whatever, I say that mantra and I go grab an essential oil. So I, I, so basically all of your five senses, when you employ them, yes, you basically awaken this part of yourself that allows you to ground and get back into alignment. Yeah. So you choose the tools. I am huge essential oils lady. So I grab essential oil. That's what I'm smelling. Mm -hmm. You too. too. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I put them on too. That's the touch. Mm -hmm. Um, And then auditory. So I speak out something. It might just be God help me right now. I do not know (laughs) what is happening. I, and, and sometimes that sacred longing or that longing of the heart that comes out when you speak it, Yeah. you hear it in your own voice and your own voice is the most convincing to your subconscious of any other voice. Yeah. So speaking out, hearing, those are all pathways. The, the taste, the spiritual pathway of taste is speaking. So sound, taste, touch, smell, hearing. No, I always said, I always said sound. What are they? Touch, taste, sound, mm-hmm. sight. Feel. Mm-hmm. And, okay. So you employ all of those. And it can literally take me when I'm doing stop, breathe, receive. And I'm breathing, I'm doing all the sensory stuff. It takes me like a minute, not even that long, but the breathing part is really huge. So I, but I, I will tell my kids and I will tell my business associates, look, I need a time out. I need to go into my closet. I need to collect my, and what you're doing is you're instructing others in how to do self-care in the moment, in the moment. So I'll even be on like a zoom call and I'll be like, just a minute. They'll see what I'm doing. I'm like, (laughs) Yeah. Let's just ground back into this and let's just see what, let's just notice what's happening here. Mm-hmm. Instead of all this posturing to be right and figure it out, do all the masculine stuff. There's a space for that. Yeah. But let's rest in, this goes for men, rest into your inner flow, your inner intuition, your knowing. And that for, there's a, there's a phrase in the, feminine wisdom circles that I, I, it's called, you know, your, your womb wisdom, Mm. knowing your gut knowing, right. You can't access that. If you're up in your head a lot, you just can't. 
You can. I love that you do this even when you're in the midst of, you know, your meetings and your day and kind of the the busyness that does happen when you're trying to be productive. Because even though I don't strive for busyness, you're, when you're being productive, you can end up with a jam schedule, which does feel very busy, whether it's productive or not, right? You could mm-hmm. also be really busy and not have completed a daggone thing yeah. and, you know, and not gotten through, yeah. but you standing with love and action by modeling that, like, you know, hold on. And then stopping and breathing and receiving without you saying what you're doing. And I know sometimes you do have to explain based on the context of where you are in the moment. Like if you're on stage with a microphone in your hand with 5,000 people, you might want to tell them what you're doing before they're like, ambulance, come get her, right? <laughs> Something's going on with Sheree. But I, I really appreciate, like to me, this is living fully. Even through the transitions and the pivots that are bound to happen, if you're open to receiving your next level, all of that awkwardness, those hurricanes, those storms, a few intervals and tornadoes, it's going to happen because life is happening yes. around us and we can't control it. But you, Cherie, being someone who's standing powerfully in the, this is messy all around me and I still stand in my power and I'm going to take a moment to recalibrate myself mm. and, and in my marriage and my life as a, as a woman and all my other key relationships and my business and business partnerships, as well as with my clients, you standing in that space is divine and there's no other way to to be except to ignore and you're just you know slowing down an ultimate progression that could happen and could be beautiful and if you keep ignoring ignoring the signals this you know the messages from your body <clears throat> pardon me your body will stop you yep you will get sick mm-hmm. you will get mm-hmm. sick something will happen Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. I'm a homeopath and I am all oh, oh my awesome. God. We'd be like, listen now. Yeah. I know where that pain in your back is coming from, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, very exactly. very real physical ailments that will Absolutely. come because of the energy that's trapped in our body. So Yeah, and I and I feel like I need to share this with your listeners real quick. Um yeah. just because she's telling me. Um so I lost a sister to suicide. She's two years younger than me. She left behind five children. Mm. ages two to 12. And this was a woman who was doing it all. Ran a music school out of her home. I mean, like she, five children, ages two to, tw- you know, like busy mother, um, very suffered from depression and, and bipolar and had some other, you know, addiction issues with painkiller. But I feel like I need to just bring her into this because sometimes she's like, Sheree, she's <laughs> actually, um, it's been 16 years since wow. she passed, but I think that she is the, for me, she is the worst case scenario of, of what could happen when we don't listen to ourselves. And we learned through her journals after she passed that she, and this is a woman who went to church every Sunday, teaching the kids all the things that the God and this and Jesus, that Mm -hmm. I'd stopped praying for two years because she felt unworthy. And we could have a whole other discussion on worthiness, right? Yes, we could. But for her, it became um, the noise of taking care of everybody out here and, and really losing that soul voice of her own. So I just wanted to share that, um, not to, you know, drop it down too much other than she just sometimes shows up to me and she, when I'm listening, yeah, like right now saying, you know, you know, just tell the people it's, it's worth it. It's, it's worth it. It's not selfish to, to be the, to, to make, to, to set your own domain and to be playing in your own loves, your own passions. And for her, it was music, Mm. music. And because of some of the medications she took, she wasn't able to fully take her own creativity to the level she desired. But what it, what I see her demise was really a disconnection from her own soul voice and, and really trying to please everybody else. And so 
that's my take home message is to give people, like you said, that permission to pause. Yes. The grand time out because you have to be your own best friend, your own advocate, your own doctor, your own lover, your own everything. You have to show up in all of those archetypes for yourself because you'll be waiting a long time Mm -hmm. if you're waiting for somebody else to do that for you, including, you know, my husband cherishes me, loves and adores me, but he is not going to meet all the needs that I, 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 I'm not going to rely on another person to meet my needs anymore. Right. And the reality is he shouldn't meet all your needs because then you wouldn't be able to have space or room to discover the greatest, juiciest parts of you that you haven't explored yet. You would be distracted in complacency. Yes. You would be completely complacent. And and I say that we're we're picking on you, Cherie, because you're (laughs) honoring us with your vulnerability. And thank you so much for sharing. I professionally digitally stalked you. So I I knew about the story with your sister, Mm -hmm. but I know everyone else didn't. And it was really powerful for you to to share that for so many reasons, because we're humans. And I know there's a lot of people that are listening to this, uh, whether they have someone in their life that also seems a little bit different, especially after you know, 14, 15 months of being isolated um, away from mm-hmm. the normalcy of their lives for, for better and for worse and all the things. And there are people that are connected to us that have experienced suicidal ideation, if not actual, you know, uh, failed plans for for moving through it um, in terms of being able to be what they call a successful death. And you as a clinician, you you know, all of the layers that go into that. There's so many, there's so many people that are listening to this that I know, because I've spoken to some of them directly, that are heartbroken because of life, just showing that it It wasn't ready to receive them in all their ways. And it was only showing them that because they hadn't fully connected to who they were in the deepest layers of themselves. So I really honor you for your truth, your sister's story, which has become your story. There is no separation. You're intertwined at this point. And you also taking that, that love for her and your nieces and nephews, as well as your own family and being able to pour it into the world in a way where you can help them become more whole so we can lose one less person along the way. I really do appreciate you for that. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for making it a safe space to share that. Yeah, absolutely. So how can people connect with you and get more information on the book that's coming out? Oh, I got a book. Yeah, I got a book. <laughs> oh man. So this will all be about being in your feminine sovereignty. Um, but it's not coming out till later in the year, but the best place to follow me is just on Instagram, Cherie.Burton, C-H-E-R-I-E. And then, um, of course, my podcast, Women Seeking Wholeness. But I do have um, some really fun offerings on my website that you can work with me personally, or I have like a Fix Your Marriage in 40 Days course. I have some fun at Stan Be Shine School. So yeah, just go to my website, CherieBurton.com and Instagram, Cherie Burton. No, I love it. Um, I was waiting for you to to say something else because I felt like there was something there, but maybe it's not for the Balanced Bully listeners. Ah, uh, well, it is. Well, so my book, I don't know. It's like my book is, I can't even say the title right now because the publisher is like, we're not mm-hmm. sure we're going to go with that. But this, this is my baby. This is going to be um, a real kind of expose, um, and deep dive into my research on the divine feminine and how, um, it it sort of bucks up against some of the cultural stuff I was raised with. So it's going to require a lot of courage, but, um, yeah, it's, you're probably picking up because my soul's like, girl, tell her. <laughs> I'm about it. Um, it's yeah, maybe, maybe we can revisit it when it's ready to go and launch, but yeah, just follow me and, and people are going to know when it's ready to roll. Well, I would love to have you back to the show, um, you know, whenever you're comfortable, but especially when we're allowed to share more about the book, because intuitively I know that it's very powerful and I feel mm. that there's so much more for you to share. It's just, not ripe enough yet for most mm-hmm. people to be able to digest it. So I honor that. I respect mm-hmm. it. You are amazing. You. How are you? <laughs> I'm so glad we got to have this chat. Me too. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Mm, thank you. 
Balance Bowly listeners, I told you so. I'm having one of those like high school moments where I'm like, I told you so, I told you so, I told you I was bringing you someone amazing. <laughs> Make sure that you follow Sheree Burton and all the places. It's below in the show notes. And please, for the love of all that is omniscient and pulling you forth, Make sure you subscribe, rate this podcast, and share it with all the other ambitiously bold and brave men and women in your life that need these balanced love and work tools. That's what it's for. It's to share. Sharing is caring. I know it feels really elementary to say that, but it is. It's the truth. Let's take it back to ABCs and give people what they need. I promise. I did not mean for that to rhyme. All right, everybody. I'm looking forward to continuing to show up fully for you in the interim of seeing you next week right here at the Balance Bully Podcast. I want you to continue to create your balance and create your joy, but remember, do it boldly. Mm-hmm.